Welcome to Art with Lorian, the place to reconnect with your divine inner artist and discover the joy of painting outside the lines. So welcome to My Foundations, episode 16. This is a very special episode because this is what I call my grand finale of my foundation series. And so in this episode, we are going to be creating and finally using our journal, our art sketchbook, and creating a very special art journal. And this is my gift to you. As you continue to work with the elements of art, the principles of design, and all of the tools that we've learned and all of the techniques and uh, projects and experiments that we've been doing over the past 15 episodes, including uh, if you've looked at my tools of the trade, I talk about papers, brushes, how to make a viewfinder, and I'll be continuing with that series, uh, providing various tools that artists that we use, all of us use as artists, to create and to be craftspeople and to be creators and to create and express ourselves from the heart. So I look forward to sharing more tools of the trade with you. And this art journal exercise and this art journal really like a launch. It's a launch into a longer, uh, long-term, even lifelong practice that you may enjoy on a daily basis. It's something that I've been really enjoying. Um, and I'll talk more about that soon as we dive into this episode. And so welcome. And so now I'd like to introduce the materials for this episode. You'll need your art journal. This is the one I'm going to be using. I do have several. I'm going to be showing you different ways to work with them. So your art journal, your um, magazine cutouts. So have those. Maybe you have some leftover from last time. I do have a couple folders where I keep magazine pullouts. Um, I'll just kind of lift it up here. And I have them labeled. One's fashion and one's travel. And I put pictures that I collect in, you know, over time. And so when I do go to make a mixed media collage or do some kind of work like this, I have things to pull from. So I've gone ahead and pulled those. So have those. If you have any cool decorative papers, I do have some decorative paper that I picked up. Um, a beautiful handmade paper that I love. I may use. Um, also, I want to just introduce these little pieces of these are paintings that I've repurposed. And so I went ahead and cut those. This is kind of fun to take an old painting or some kind of painting that you didn't really love and to repurpose, reclaim it, and to love it again by incorporating it into a collage. So those are here. You'll require scissors, uh, glue, paste, um, tape this time, add that on, your marker, uh, brushes, markers, colored pencils, co things to do some color work with. We have, we've I've introduced several options in my foundation series and then of course um, one of them is the gouache paint if you'd like to bring those out today um, and all of your painting materials so the palette and your palette knife and your squirt bottle and paints and um, anything else that would help you do a mixed media collage as well as um, something new that I'm going to introduce, and this is gesso. And so gesso is a really awesome uh, tool to have in your toolkit. It's a great way to, well, I'm going to show you. It's a great way to, to reclaim or to refresh or to start new on your substrate. And so it's basically very thick white paint. It's like a thick white tempera, very rich and opaque. And then your Mod Podge, which we've used before for mixed media collage, uh, your pencil, and of course your brushes. And then, oh, last but not least, for the Mod Podge is this little spongy brush. And I found these work the best for applying the Mod Podge. And this would just be to kind of seal your collage, optional, of course, at the end when we're done. And so let's dive into creating an art journal. Um, taking it from a sketchbook to a place of rest, to making it a, an art journal that is like a diary, but visual, mixed media, and a place that I like to see as a container. It's a, a container for your thoughts, for your dreams, for your wishes, for your ideas, your mind maps, your conversations, note-taking, doodling, and all the, play, all the things that you would do like in a diary or a a journal with lines, but this is you know, blank pieces of paper and you can 
do anything. Sky's the limit. And so I'm going to show you just a few techniques that I've learned and picked up along the way that have made this book so much more than just a, a standard journal, but really an art journal. And so, like I said, it's like a container. And if you can see it like that and start to kind of build this relationship with your art journal, it'll be an awesome practice that could be a lifelong studio practice or life practice um, that you can, you'll end up having, you know, maybe hundreds of these and um, they'll be like a really sacred place to call your own. And so um, a few of the things that I think are really fun to, to you to, to use this journal for in ways that we can kind of differentiate how we normally would use a journal is to, one of the first things is to use the full layout of, of your journal. And so you know, normally we come, you know, start over here on the right and, you know, write da 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 da. But to use the full layout, to use both pages as your surface. So for example, um, <clears throat> let's say I'm going to paint a background, which is another really fun way to use the journal, is to create a background before you even write. And so I'm going to use a light colored marker and I'm going to use the full layout and put kind of a background in. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw in with this paint marker just a background. And one of the cool things about these markers is they're water soluble. So I can take my brush after I lay down this color. So I'm using the full layout as my page. And if you happen to have water soluble markers, which I'll just show you what these can do. These are really fun to get as well. Um, and they'll be in the materials list. Is, is to add some water and it, it turns into paint. So, you know, they're, wa they're water soluble. And so I'm just gonna, this is like one thing you can do is put in a little bit of a background using the full uh, width of your page, the full width. Bring these guys over and I'm just gonna bring them over on the bottom here. And you know, if you feel like using a light color and brushing it in, it's almost like a watercolor effect. You can use watercolor paints and you can also use your paints, which I'll show you later when we use some of our gesso to create a thicker kind of painted paint surface, a substrate. And so that's one of the things that you can do with your journal is to create, use the whole layout. Uh, the second thing I wanted to show you that you can do with your pages is when you're, you're note taking is to use uh, both sides of your brain, your right and your left brain. As you know, the left brain's for language and verbal, and the right brain's more image and imagination, and, and they have two different functions, and to get them to work together in unison and to strengthen each other and to remember things, you know, helping you remember things longer and retain. And, I mean, accessing both sides of the brain is, there's immense research on the benefits of that. But one way you can do that is to not only use text, is to use also pictures and symbols and graphics and doodles. And so um, I'm going to show you in this journal, one of the things that you can do is you can, you know, create little boxes or little ovals or uh, triangles or just different little graphics that you can then go ahead and you know write your notes in so like for example I'm gonna listen to uh, a class and I'm gonna go ahead then and take my notes in these little kind of compartments or chapters you know whatever the theme of that 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 piece of information is I'm gonna maybe I'll bullet point them or um, even draw or just freeform write with whatever pencil or whatever else I use. So that's one thing you can do um, is that. And you can also, as you know, create mind maps, thinking maps, little webs and graphic organizers, which, you know, for example, is, you know, putting your main idea here and then branching off. This is a very common graphic organizer. And so to do some journaling this way, to put like your main idea, so let's say it's art, <laughs> and then, you know, or my art, and you know, what what do you want to make? Maybe you want to make, you know, whatever, whatever these subcategories are. So this is another fun way to use your art journal is when you're taking notes, 
you're, you're on a you know, class or a workshop or a retreat or something like that. And then another really fun thing you can do is you can change the font. I'm looking for a blank sheet. Here we go. You can change the font, the size of the font, the color of the font, the types of pens, the the thick and the, the width, uh, thickness and the thinness, the width. So, for example, like if I use um, to, again you, the word art, make a big art. I can also write it small. And so, just kind of mixing it up helps us process information differently. And I'm just writing this word in different ways, um, whatever that looks like. I mean, I can maybe mix it up by putting some dots at the at the points here, or or lines or making it, um, you know, you just, it's really the, the possibilities are endless with fonts, just like in our word processing software, um, just to play around with your font sizes, the ink colors, the mediums, your pencil colors, and to have fun with your words. And, and then of course, you know, adding some imagery. So if I'm gonna say art, whatever that metaphor is for me, um, would be perhaps a little <laughs> ocean scene and a little painting and this is my art. So, you know, if you also want to draw in pictures, you can do that too. Or not draw in pictures, take notes in pictures. And so just a couple ways that you can use your journal as like a, a place to document and different ways you can go about that or what I've shown. And then another really fun thing that I've learned, which is really cool, is if you're out and about, and you say you're traveling or just going about your daily life, and you find little things, little objects, um, you can create a pocket to put them in, in your journal. And so what you do, and what I've done, is use a, re a repurposed part of a painting, and then I just fold the ends in, three of the ends, and it creates this little pocket, right? And then the way to attach it is this tape. And you can also use double stick tape, by the way. Um, but I'm going to use regular tape, and I'm just going to put it here on this side. I actually think double stick tape is better. And if you have that, go for that. And I'm going to tape it to this side on all three sides here. And then you just pop it on your um, pop it on your paper, and you have this cool little pocket. I love this. I learned this recently, and I'm just really loving the coolness of this. And you can also, by the way, you can use little bags. Let's say you're you're shopping those little teeny gift bags that you get. And there's like, what do I do with all these little bags? Those can become little pockets. You know how they have that little already at the bottom there's that area and so just pop this down and I've created a little pocket here oops the bottom okay and press it down I like to use heavy cookbooks put them on top of there so if you, you know I like to cook and um, do a lot of posts of my food on my Instagram feed if you want to check that out it's just at as the handle is at Lorian Eck. And I have a lot of fun recipes in there, food posts. Okay, anyway, so here's my little pocket. And now I can, you know, stick whatever in there. I can even stick a crystal. <laughs> you want to put a little crystal in there, or feathers, or business cards, or, you know, things that you pick up um, along the way. I thought this was a really fun technique that I learned recently, and I love that. And now I'm going to show you how you can make your paper thicker. So one of the things that you can do is you have your, your white paper, and I'm actually going through these now because I have some of these already created. Get your white paper, and this paper is fairly thin. Okay. And one of the things that you can do, and this is super easy and simple. It's funny that I hadn't thought of this before. But when I learned it, I was like, wow, that's so cool. It's just to simply glue two pieces of paper together. And I like to use the paste because the paste uh, dries nice and flat. And again, put like a heavy book, textbook, or an art book, or a 
coffee table book right on there after and it'll dry real flat and nice. Just put your paper down and after it dries, we're just going to smooth it out and weight it um, even more than just pressing on it. But now I have two sheets. It's a lot thicker and this will hold more medium. So that's one thing you can do. And the second thing you do, thing you can do is use your gesso and just go ahead and squirt it right on there. So I'm going to apply this on here. This is my gesso straight out of the bottle. And I'm going to use my foam brush, my sponge brush, which creates a really nice, even application. It's nice and smooth uh, versus a bristle brush, which would um, maybe leave some lines. So I'm going to go ahead and I like to use these these sponge brushes, which you can pick up at any hardware store, um, to apply gesso and also to apply my Mod Podge, uh, kind of the glossy varnish that I put on top of collages and things. So, yeah, I like to apply this on here and use a real even kind of stroke and get this nice and even. Of course, this has to dry for a while. And um, yeah, and I'm going to hold it up and show you. So this is, I don't know what you'll see, it's white on white, but this is another cool way to create a substrate, a painting substrate, a surface that has a little bit of tooth. And um, you can go ahead and just put that on there. You can see I have my wet gesso and just let that dry. And so if you want a thick piece of paper, you can actually combine those two techniques. You can paste the two together, two sheets, and then on top of that, put your gesso on. And then you have a great, nice, thick substrate or surface to do whatever journaling exercise or art, art exercise that you're doing in your art journal. Okay, and so those are some of the ways that you can, you know, manipulate and be creative with the interior and, and use your journal to really like use it as a creative process book and use it as a, as a place to put your insights for your, on your self-discovery journey and your, your whole process, your life, your life. And so now I want to talk about and really just this is the second episode of this grand finale is to create a sacred space using your covers and so I, I mentioned that the art journal can be seen as like a container or a vessel or a, like a basket to gather all of your things to put everything in there and so the outer the front outer and back outer covers are sort of like the gatekeepers they're the, the place that protect what's on the inside you know and so what we're gonna do and and we've done this before in my episode on mixed media collage is is you're gonna create a mixed media collage and so I'm gonna put one on this side and I wanted to show you um, some of the things you can do so with your cover and with the intention of creating a sacred space inside the journal Think about, you know, these covers as like gateways or doors. And so maybe you want to put fabric. And so like this journal of mine has fabric. Um, you don't have to use paper. You can, but you can also combine all these things. This one has just some velvet fabric and some brocade on the spine. Uh, this current art journal of mine is a mixed media collage uh, that was uh, protected with Mod Podge. And so this was, you know, my intention, which I want to talk about your intention, setting your intention for your art journal. Um, and maybe you're going to use text. And so I have my text here. I have my name, Lorian's art journal. And, um, you know, and I use things I had and whatever I wanted to play with. You know, there's no wrong. You can use pictures of yourself. You can use things from magazines. You can use... Um, you know, repurposed pieces of, of a painting or artwork, cutouts or torn pieces from magazines, which I think I'm going to be doing a bit of. Um, whatever art materials that you have, whatever goodies you have around you, whatever colors your paint, um, you know, and just really have fun and make it your own. And so I'm going to do the front cover on this black one. And like we've done before, you'll just go ahead and cover and I'm going to show you what I have when I'm done. 
and um, yeah, so just have fun. And the main thing is to to create the intention, set the intention for this particular journal. Number one, and number two is is to have that in the back of your mind as you're putting it together. So to kind of go into a meditative space as you're creating your cover um, or covers, if you want to do both, it's really up to you. Um, this is my gift to you. This can become a daily practice of using your journal or weekly or however you use it. Um, maybe you just take it on a retreat or a trip or whatever, however you work with it, um, it's up to you. And so go ahead and start your journal cover or covers. And so I'm just gonna be gluing these on and just having some fun with this. And so I've completed my front cover of this art journal that I am happy to share with you now. I do have this other one, and so like I was saying before, these journals have become an integral part of my daily practice and my creative process. Um, and so I have two going on. And so here's my cover. I just put some imagery, some symbols, some text, uh, one of my favorite artists, and really poured uh, my heart into with my intention to create this sacred space of this particular journal. And um, yeah, so I hope you did the same. I hope you enjoyed yourself creating whatever it was, if it was a mixed media collage or uh, you could just even paste on a painting that you've done or whatever you did to create the front cover and or the back cover to create the sacred space of your art journal, to create this container and to, to kind of open up the doorways into incorporating more creativity into your life, to bringing creativity into your daily life and to exploring and continuing on this wonderful journey of self-discovering through the arts, through self-expression. And so this concludes my foundation series and I'd like to invite you to subscribe, stay in touch. Please you know, do follow any of my social networks channels so we can stay connected and I look forward to sharing much more art content. I have many more classes planned. I have about 10 classes planned that I'll be happy to share with you. If you subscribe, I'll be doing lots of previews and you'll be the first to know and continue to have fun, comment, show me your art, tell your friends, create art together. There's so many possibilities. Um, using creativity as a tool and as a tool for healing, for community building, and self-expression, of course, first and foremost. So thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you in the studio. So here is Mubi, my handy-dandy production assistant. She's been super instrumental in producing the Foundation series. We She came into our home about three up to one or two episodes in and so hopefully you've watched her grow and enjoyed her little cameos and she's been so good she knows high five yes high five all right and we just love her enthusiasm for being quiet and peaceful <laughs> during our production tapings and Thank you for joining us and thank you for creating art creating a more beautiful harmonious and self-expressed reality and so looking forward to more cameos with Moo in my further classes and workshops and so what do we say until next time we'll see you in the studio have fun